Hi, my name is James Popsis and uh, I am, I suppose, first and foremost, a uh, photography YouTuber. Uh, I make photography videos, sometimes about landscape photography, uh, sometimes about street photography, and a lot of the time it's stuff that I suppose is somewhere in the middle. And uh, yeah, I have fun doing it for the most part. Favorite images, um, I'd have to probably start with this one which I shot on Peterman Island in Antarctica. It's amazing, completely brutal place really, even when you go at the height of summer, as I did. And uh, there's just kind of a little refuge hut there and not much else other than thousands of penguins. Incredible conditions that you get there, regardless of kind of what the light is like, you're probably gonna end up with something epic. So it's the kind of place you don't need to do too much work as a photographer. I shot this image with my A7R Mark IV. I was running around trying to get penguins in exactly the right spot with the hut in the background. Typically, a lot of the time I, I am described as a landscape photographer, but for me, more often than not, even when a landscape is in my image, it's normally about something. It's usually kind of about a, a subject and the landscape is just kind of decoration. Sometimes when you're in landscapes uh, like that, when there are things that aren't massively changeable, you can kind of get into a, a mindset of taking your time, setting yourself up on a tripod. But the reality is sometimes moments like this happen and you need to be ready to go and you need to be aware of what's happening and anticipating really. And uh, that's something that I try and work on all the time. My kind of, uh, my skills for anticipation and what might happen next. Uh, so the next one I'd have to go for, I think uh, was probably one from Norway, more specifically the Leverton Islands. I never know if that's how you say it. Basically, it was summer, height of summer. The sun just kind of spins around in the sky, never sets. And uh, we happened across this scene, which um, is typical of scenes I love. Basically, the landscape is just decoration for uh, a subject, a really compelling subject somewhere in the scene. And in this case, it's a tiny little fishing village with uh, a little red boat in it. We were traveling from one honeypot tourist location to another where people get lots of famous photos. It's tempting to kind of just be looking at the photos you've got at the last place before you get to the next place if you're not driving. But uh, what I like to do is just leave that until you're back at the hotel and keep your eyes peeled because you never know what you're gonna come across. It's not the sort of photo that works particularly well on social media because that little boat is tiny, but uh, printed massive, it's, it's just exactly my kind of photo and uh, I really love it. So my favorite image of them all is probably this one shot in West Greenland uh, with my friend Ulanak in late April when the sea ice was disintegrating, but we thought we've got to go for a walk on the sea ice. And uh, we came across this iceberg and uh, I very kindly asked my friend to uh, get into the scene just to give the iceberg some scale. And uh, I think it turned out really well. I don't think he'd have done it a second time. It was about minus 25 that day. And I'd say on days like this, it's super crucial to uh, keep your batteries under your armpits if possible, because uh, they drain quickly when they're not being used. So keep about five spare batteries on you and, uh, and keep them warm, close to your body. Because if they're in your camera bag, they're gonna be dead by the time you put them in your camera. So my photography journey started maybe 11 or 12 years ago with a Lumix GX1, which I reacquired uh, last year from MPB because uh, well, I missed it, frankly. And uh, I used this quite a lot last year because it's such a fun little camera. So uh, I was sad to leave this camera, but I upgraded to a an Olympus IMD EM5. This is the original one. Looks super retro, another micro four thirds camera. Absolutely loved this. And I think it was probably the first camera that I felt that I'd, I'd started to cut my teeth in photography with. Eventually though, after, yeah, two or three years, I'd say, I was lured into the, uh, the promise of full frame photography. And so, I ended up with uh, a Nikon D750, a camera that if I'm honest, I didn't massively love, mostly because it just felt so big and chunky compared to the cameras that I'd had before it. And also in some ways it felt like a step backwards because uh, even though it's full frame, it's not quite as, um, as advanced in some ways as uh, mirrorless cameras. I discovered quite quickly it wasn't for me. So uh, I then moved on to a camera which, if not my favorite camera of all time, a camera that is probably responsible for my career taking off really. And it's this, it's the, uh, the Lumix G9, a camera that I absolutely love and that feels more familiar to me than any other camera. Another Micro Four Thirds camera, so I went Micro Four Thirds, full frame, and then back to Micro Four Thirds. 
which I never really found a problem with, um, and I absolutely loved it. Mostly because uh, even though this is one of the bigger bodies that you get with Micro Four Thirds, the lenses, regardless of what you use, make for a really small, compact setup. It was only the fact that I make videos that uh, was the reason that I, I ended up switching away from this. So it's a fantastic video camera, this, but the autofocus, as anyone who's used uh, old Lumix cameras will know, wasn't quite up to scratch. And so reluctantly, I went back to full frame and to uh, Sony. So this is my current stills camera. This is a uh, Sony a7R Mark IV. It's a camera which technically I believe to be pretty much perfect. The autofocus is phenomenal uh, and I sometimes use this for video. More often than not though, I'll use another Sony camera, uh, Sony a7 Mark IV. But for stills, this is my absolute go-to. Uh, 61 megapixels, which is absolutely ridiculous and purely a nice to have, to be honest. I absolutely don't need that kind of resolution, but I do enjoy kind of punching in. And uh, for me, I'm willing to accept the fact that I need to buy hard drives every two weeks. Lovely camera, um, if a bit boring, but I don't mind that because the output is so incredible. Oh, so if I could pick one camera, um, I think it would probably be an amalgamation of two cameras, to be honest, two cameras that I own. So my Sony a7R Mark IV is just phenomenal in its output. I absolutely love the pictures that this takes, but I don't particularly enjoy using the camera. But whereas my Fuji X-Pro3, I absolutely love using, but the output of the Sony is just better. So if there's a way to get the output of this 61 megapixel sensor and stick it in this camera with the rangefinder option, cool titanium body, I would love that. That would be my dream camera, I think. So my favorite lens is probably something like this. This is a 40 millimeter F1.2. Uh, it's manual focus, but 40 millimeters is just by far my favorite focal length. Sometimes for me, I find 35 too wide and 50 too restrictive. I just love the way 40 millimeters looks. It looks natural. And when I see a photo taken at about 40 millimeters, it doesn't strike me immediately as a photo. Sometimes if I see a telephoto shot, I can't get pulled into it as quickly because I know immediately that it's a photo I'm looking at, which is a strange thing to say, but it counts for ultra wides as well. So 40, super natural look. And uh, this F1.2 gives me loads of options in terms of shooting in low light or really shallow depth of field. I love it. My favorite accessory of all time is this Peak Design capture clip. And I know that stands for most photographers, I know. Essentially, if you're using a backpack, uh, you stick this on the strap and it means that you can just clip in your camera and have it accessible at all times while keeping both hands free. If you're in the mountains or anywhere where you're having to kind of scramble around, this is invaluable. And uh, it's probably the best piece of kit I've ever bought. My favorite bag is definitely this. This uh, is a Peak Design 10 liter sling. And uh, the reason I love this bag is that I can't fit everything I want to take typically within it. So I have to make some really hard choices before I leave home. And uh, that just means that I don't get halfway up a mountain with a really sore back, regretting all of my decisions. Uh, I have to be selective and typically when I'm selective, I, I enjoy my photography more because my back doesn't hurt halfway through the day. So yeah, this would be my, my favorite bag. Easy access and never too heavy. I suppose my best tip for anyone wanting to improve their photography in any way really is to spend time taking pictures, which is a really boring tip, but there is no substitute for being out with your camera, regardless of what the conditions are like, uh, regardless of whether you think you're gonna get any good shots on any given day, spending time out with your camera, getting to know it, getting to understand what it is that makes composition, what it is that makes a good photo, it's invaluable and it's the only way to improve. And it's a hard slog, it takes many years, but uh, it's a surefire way to get photos that you're proud of eventually. So thank you for watching. Uh, you can find me and what I do by searching James Popsis, uh, both on Instagram and YouTube, and uh, subscribe to MPB's YouTube channel too. Thanks.